Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use SharePoint and Power Apps together, how to fill in a list, remove items, add items. Just a simple, easy way to do that. So pretty much I have a SharePoint list with a few columns. Uh, state, city, zip code are all single line text and rate and consumption are number columns. So in Power Apps, I just have my one starting screen. I named it Screen Form. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an edit form. And if you notice, once we add the edit form, it's not connected to any data. So the first thing I want to do is define the data source. So I'm going to use that Power Apps example data source. And it has five columns, the state, rate, consumption, city, and zip code. I'm going to go ahead and rearrange these. You can just drag and drop. That's an easy way to rearrange them. You can also go into the fields and rearrange them here if you prefer to do it that way. So, if you notice, we have our form. When we hit play, there's nothing to display. Well, it doesn't realize that you need a new form or an edit form. It doesn't know where the data is coming from. So the first thing we want to do is add a button. Uh, this button is going to start new, so I'm just going to name it button new. Oh, that's, I'm going to change the text here and name the button button new. So with this button, what we want to do is first rename our form. I'm going to rename the form to uh, location, form location. So now I've selected the new button. When someone selects the new button, we want a new form on the form location. So now if we hit the play button and we hit new, you can see our form appears. But even if we type in information, you know, we're not going to be able to save any data yet. So the next option that we want to do is create a save button. So now I have two buttons, a save and a new. On the save button on select, we're going to submit form. Which form are we going to submit? The location form. So now, if we were to come in, select new, Change the rate, change the consumption, the city. I'll just put in the zip code and hit save. You'll notice in our SharePoint, after we refresh, we have our line item. So that's pretty much the easiest way to write directly to SharePoint. But what if we want to edit that? Uh, last submission. What I'm going to do is create a new screen. And this screen I'm going to call uh, uh, screen edit, I guess. Or, or how about choices? Screen choices. So there's a few ways we can do this. We can either do a gallery or a data table. I think gallery is the most used, but I just wanted to show a data table real quick. So pretty much I just selected the source of the data table and this is our selection. So there's a couple things we need to do. We need to go back to our original form and create a navigate button. Actually we don't even need a navigate button. How about once we save, we'll put a semicolon and we'll navigate back to screen choices. So now, when we hit new, and I don't know the zip codes for here, but I'll just hit save. It's going to navigate us back to this screen. So now you can see we have two line items in our SharePoint. Once I hit refresh, we'll see our two line items. You didn't need to refresh on Power Apps. So now, if we wanted to edit one of those line items, 
let's create another button. This button is going to edit. I'm going to name it button edit. So what we want to do is navigate to screen form. And we want to be an edit form with the form location, the form from our first page. Now when I select this, it's actually not going to work. So I have to select it, I hit edit, nothing appears. Why does nothing appear? Well, we need to go to the form and then advanced properties, change our item. So we want our item to be based off the data table. Right now it's named data table one. I'll just leave it as data table one for this, but in production I would want to change that. So we want the default to be data table one dot selected. And let me just go ahead and create that navigate back button because we don't always want to save. So this button is just going to be called button back and it's going to take us back. So now if I hit back and I didn't navigate back to the right screen, so screen choices, when I hit back it navigates me back. If I hit this one, edit, it's going to edit the North Carolina, hit back, select this one, edit South Carolina. I can come in here and change uh, this to, I'm not sure, how about New York? Save it, it changed and edit, edited our line item. So now when we go back to SharePoint, you'll see once I refresh that it now says New York and updated our SharePoint list. But what if we wanted to remove a line item? So let's go ahead and add a delete button and this delete button can be anything it doesn't have to be a button honestly it can be an icon you could come in here and find an icon maybe like a I think there's a trash can icon somewhere how about an X we'll find an X so when someone selects the, the X button we're going to remove from, it's asking you from which data source. So the data source is actually our SharePoint list. And then it's going to ask you, okay, which line item do you want to delete? Well, we want to delete from data table one dot selected. So now if we select North Carolina and we hit our X button, it's going to delete that line item. Well, what else we need here is we actually need a button for new. New. And just to add to this, when we navigate back to our screen form, we can add a comma and we can say fade. That's just a nice little thing to do. And then we're going to in parentheses and then we're going to do a new form based on form location. So now when we select new, we get a blank. And it would probably be better to actually, if we change the order of our sequence of the new button, if we change new form at the beginning here, and then we navigate, maybe we won't notice that change. So when we hit new, it's already blank. And so we can say, uh, uh, and uh, you know, none of the fields are actually required. So now we have our ca uh, California. And who knows if I spelled Los Angeles right? I probably didn't. <laughs> 
put in, uh, if I made a mistake I could easily just come in here and remove it and we can see that update right into our SharePoint list and just to add to this more let's say if we wanted a new form and we said oh we only have a select group of states that we want people to choose from so you could go into SharePoint edit your columns and change it to a choice field but uh, let's say it was in Excel or it was this was writing to SQL you wouldn't be able to do that so one option is to go into edit fields select your state and change it to allowed values so now it's changed it to a multi select so what we wanted to do is give it some options so I'm actually going to take this out of the uh, I guess the default and unlock the change properties so the allowed values are now going to be New York North Carolina South Carolina California when we start a new it's going to default to the first selection but you have a, a few options and you can just hit save and now we have our two and we can just keep going on down North Carolina uh, Charlotte save now we have three pretty much that's how you write and edit to SharePoint just a very quick tutorial thank you guys for watching